This is Samuel George and the following is a tutorial video on flexor tendon repair techniques. The first technique we will be talking about is a two-strand modified Kessler. Your first suture on your side is a straight longitudinal bite taking at least a centimeter if you can followed by a transverse bite creating the first grasping loop the next grasping loop is done by the following longitudinal bite away from yourself and the same is done on the other end of the tendon. It's important to take the transverse bite closer to the repair site as opposed to the longitudinal bite which is away. So go along with the longitudinal bite. This is important in order to create a grasping loop as opposed to a loop which does not grasp. Once all four grasping loops are done, you'll see two strands going across to site and the knot is tied. We'll demonstrate the same technique with a hollow tube so you can see what it looks like on the inside. So the transverse bite has just been taken and a longitudinal bite and you can see that the transverse bites cross the longitudinal bites and create a locking grasping loop which grasps a few of the tendon fibers. When you pull your knot tight to it perpendicular to the tendon ends then it will bury your knot inside the tendon ends. Next technique is a four strand cruciate. Starts off the same, but your second bite is a oblique bite going from the side of the tendon on one end, on your side, to the opposing side on the other tendon end, like so. In order to remember this, if you go in on the side on one tendon end you come out on the side on the other tendon end. If you go in centrally like this on one tendon end you come out centrally on the other tendon end. This technique provides four strands across the repair site and is stronger than the two strand modified Kessler but slightly bulkier. Using a hollow tube construct like this you can see what it looks like inside the tendon. There are four grasping loops similar to the modified Kessler but there are four strands going across the repair site and the knot is tied again perpendicular to the tendon ends to bury the knot between the ends. So we'll do the four strand cruciate once again on a tendon. So the first bite is taken and you want to ensure you take at least a centimeter if possible. When you do your grasping loop, you want at least 25% of the circumference of the tendons to be taken. And you're going in an oblique direction towards the opposing corner of your four loops. And this comes out the side away from you and then when you go back in for the longitudinal suture ensure again that you take at least 25% of the circumference of the tendon in order to grasp enough fibers. The same is done on the other side. A variation of this is the Adelaide repair which is similar to this but each corner is locked. If you use this repair it'll be more difficult to glide at the end of the repair whereas with this one it does not lock and when you tie your suture at the end you can control how much bunching or tightness you have in your tendon repair. Again, tie the knot and ensure that your tendon comes together. 
for an epitendina suture, the, the silver skull is one option. I like to bury my knot, so I start from the inside of the tendon. The epitendin suture is small bites on the epitendin, ensuring you don't go deep enough to go through your core suture. And you're taking bites towards yourself. Each subsequent bite is going further away from yourself. And you create a continuous running figure of eight lat lattice net-like structure around the tendon. Often this is too difficult to do on the back wall and a over and over continuous suture is done on the back wall whereas a silver scald is used for the front wall. Once you have completed this it will gather the tendon ends and any stray tendon fibers in order to ensure a smooth glide. The diagrams show a straight line for all your bites which looks nice but if you take each bite at different lengths from the tendon end this gives you a biomechanically stronger epitendinous repair. The epitendinous repair adds anything between 10 to 50 percent of the strength of your repair. I like to end it by going in the middle of the tendon again in order to bury my knot. And as you can see, there's a net-like lattice figure of eight structure that surrounds the tendon. The over and over epitendinous is just a simple running suture. Again, you are just taking the epitendon and be careful not to go too deep as to injure or damage your core sutures which will weaken the tendon repair and result in a rupture during rehabilitation. Normally you would do smaller bites for the purpose of demonstration. I've taken bigger bites here. Common errors experienced during the tendon repairs are firstly when you do a modified Kessler or a cruciate and you do your transverse suture like this, if you take your transverse suture beyond the longitudinal suture, what you end up with is a construct that looks like this, if you can see through the tendon. And as the transverse suture is not crossing the longitudinal sutures, you do not have a grasping loop on each side this way you're not grasping tendon fibers in order to result in a good repair. Another common error is actually making your loop too small. If this happens you're only grasping a very small percentage of fibers and if you look at this from the lateral view you can see how many fibers you'd actually be grasping with that little loop. If you did a normal good transverse locking, um, sorry, grasping loop and compare that you'll see the percentage of fibers you're actually grasping with that loop compared to the previous one. Another common error is actually doing your repair too close to the end of the tendon like this. It's a good grasping loop, good suture, but you're not taking a centimeter of the tendon and you don't have enough good tendon. Thank you.